to know that God is with you is enough to calm you because here it is God may allow you to go into the furnace but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you he has power to do that or to ease your troubled mind Welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. Let, let's, let's begin reading at verse number seven. Let's, let's read it, verse number seven. I, I, I won't even read all of what I want to read, but, but I'm going to read. Verse number seven simply says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. This is the word of God for the people of God. That he, hallelujah, might be exalted that we might be enlightened. Father, in the name that's above every name, we thank you today for what you're about to do. We thank you for what you have already done. And the truth of the matter is, oh God, we're in no rush because we know who you are. We know what you've promised. We know, oh God, because your word tells us. So, oh God, our prayer is that you have your way in this time. Have your way, oh God, in this people. So that what we do not know, you teach us. Where we have not been, you take us. And what we are not, you make us. In thy son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Family, my brothers and my sisters in the faith, we are, as most of you know, in the midst of the Advent season. You all remember that the word Advent simply means to look forward to the arrival of a great person or great thing. In other words, as the man or as men, as women of the culture, we might use that word as it pertains to the arrival of some great political figure or potentate, someone that we look up to in high regards because of their accomplishments or their abilities. But for those of us who are a part of the body of Christ, the children of God, not merely by creation, but by adoption, we recognize this Advent season as a time that we look forward to celebrating the arrival of the greatest of all times. We look forward to this, and, and the reason why is because we recognize that in the celebration of Jesus Christ's birth, we celebrate what it encompasses. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, when you look at most of the Advent uh, studies and celebratory literature, it will say that this is a time that we celebrate the fact that hope is on the way. Then, then, then it, it goes on, and we find that it, it helps us to understand this is a time that we celebrate 
Not only that hope is on the way, but that peace is on the way. Then, then we find that, that not only does it celebrate hope and peace, but also that joy is on. Joy to the world. The, the Lord is come. But brothers and sisters, today we want to talk about the fact that love is on the way. Now, here it is. When you have a, a small mindset as it pertains to love, then you'll think that we're talking about a new boo is on the way. Or you'll think that we're talking about uh, uh, a, a new friend is moving into your neighborhood. But brothers and sisters, the love that God sent to this earth, his creation, is it, not like any other love. As a matter of fact, I want to entitle this particular sermonic presentation uh, from, from my brother uh, of, of, of a different uh, genre uh, in, in life. I, I want to entitle this A Love Supreme. Now, if you don't know what that's about, go home and do your homework. And I, 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 I hope you look in the jazz section of your life. A, a love supreme. Oh, Coltrane helped us out today, y'all. When, when we look at this term, uh, or when we look at the situation that love is on the way, why would God send love to this earth? You know what it is? It's the fact that God recognizes that we are a people who are in need. The need that we have, brothers and sisters, is not merely to be able to meet our daily bills, not only to put food on the table, but we have a need for love. I, I tell you, if you want to find a person that is, is powerless, that is dried up, find a person that has no love. Let, let, let's look and see what John, our brother John, this great apostle has written. Th this old man at this particular time. What has what he written? Let's look and see what he says. He, he talks about when we open up chapter number, uh, uh, chapter number four, brothers and sisters. In the beginning of this particular passage or this chapter, his whole argument is that we as believers need to learn how to dwell in truth. And, and truth, brothers and sisters, is knowing who God is, who you are, and who you ain't. I know I said ain't. Truth, brothers and sisters, is understanding how to, 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 to know when God shows up in the room. You, you don't believe me? Listen to what he says. He says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. He, he, he's not just some aborigine. He, he's not just something that has been drummed up in somebody's mind and they just wrote some stories about it. No, when you come to know who God is, when you come to understand the, the, the fact that Jesus the Christ, the word of God, God the word, God the son, has shown up on this earth for a purpose. And you make confession of that. Jesus has shown up, y'all. Somebody say, he's shown up. He says, he says, these are the type of folk that you know, they, they, they're from God. He says, and the spirit, the spirit that they have is from God. See, let me tell you something. If you're listening to somebody who's always talking about what they think, if you're listening to somebody who's always talking about, uh, about what they think is important, if you're listening to somebody standing behind the pulpit and all they do is point you to them, you in trouble. But when you stand behind this sacred desk, you ought to open your mouth and let folk know that it is no secret. What God can do. 
because God is the God of the impossible. He goes on, listen to what he says. He says, he says, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. I don't care if it's Buddha, if it's Muhammad. Uh-uh, uh, no, no, no. This, listen, 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 listen. There are some great people who have lived. There are some great, and, and there are some intellectually astute people who have lived. Quite often we listen up or we look up to people who are more intellectually astute, who are more intelligent than we are, able to verbalize and give verbiage as to what they believe. And so because they are so able to put it together, we look up to those people. But let me help you there. Muhammad died. Buddha died. Socrates, Plato, Flaho have all died. Jesus died. But only one of them, listen to this, as he said he would, got up out of the grave with all power, it had all power. Have you ever looked up the word all? All means all. He, he, he says, he says, man, he says, you, you, you need to dwell in the truth. You, when you dwell in, in the spirit of God and allow the spirit of God to dwell in you, then you dwell in truth. Lord have mercy. Hey, did you hear what I just said? See, not dwelling in what somebody else thinks or what somebody else heard, but dwelling in the truth that there is no situation that's beyond the control and interruption of God. If he wishes to. We, we write folk off. You, you know how long he been like that? How long you been like you are? With your gossiping self. You, 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 you know, I mean, I mean, it is the truth. No, it's your truth. Let me tell you something about the truth. The, the truth is proof in itself that it is the truth. <laughs> Man, y'all, y'all, you didn't catch that. When you wake up in the morning, uh, if you were so powerful, if your cousin was so powerful, uh, let, me, let me help you. If you. When you wake up in the morning, who do you think woke you up? See, I just have the ability to get up at the same time every day. Are you kidding me? You, you, when, when, when money is funny and change is strange, and, and you say all I have to do is have positive thinking, and, and, and it's, the, it's the, the law of attraction. If I say it, it'll come. In. Are you kidding me? If you get it, let me tell you where you're getting it from. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. He reveals himself to us, y'all. And as he reveals himself to us, we got to dwell in. And you shall know the truth. And the truth you know shall set you free. But then... Brother John segues, Millaways. Somebody say Millaways. Millaways of this chapter. Verse number seven, he segues. And he begins to talk about the supreme love of God. You, you know, supreme love is, 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 it ain't like other love. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all remember when you used to go into a pizza hut. And, and sit down, and, and mom and them, they had, I don't know if daddy had gotten a, a raise on his job or profit sharing came through, but, but then you sit down, and, and when they came to, to, to take your order, uh, pops would say, uh, we want the supreme. No need in telling me I can have pepperoni, I can have sausage, if I wish I can have this. No, 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 we want the supreme. 
That means everything that I could possibly want. See, mama can't, mama can't get on daddy's neck when, 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 you, when he orders the Supreme because they need vegetables. Hey, hey listen, listen, listen. Uh, bell pepper yeah. is on the Supreme. In other words, brothers and sisters, the supreme love of God is totally and all encompassing of everything you need as it pertains to love in this world. So when we look for Jesus to celebrate his birth, it's because we're looking to the point that everything I need as it pertains to love is found in Jesus. Look at what he says. He said, beloved, I don't want you to get it twisted now. He says, because if you get it twisted, you're going to be messed up. Let us love one another, for love is from God. In other words, brothers and sisters, listen to what he says. He goes on, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Somebody say supreme love. Supreme love. Uh, anyone who doesn't know love don't know God. This tie opens up. Let us love one another, for love is from God. Uh, in other words, brothers and sisters, supreme love is of a heavenly nature. It, it's, it's from it's from above. Supreme love. Because supreme love is found in only one place. See, I know what he said in your ear. I know what he said. He, he said, I love you. <laughs> then you did him bold and wouldn't reciprocate. Did you hear what I said? Hey, you didn't you didn't say nothing. <laughs> Y'all remember them days, Dre? You remember them days, bro? You remember you be on the phone, and Mama said said for us to get off the phone at a certain time. You remember that time? <laughs> <laughs> we, you you be on the phone so late because you in love you you in you in you in deep infatuation with with, with somebody, and 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 they done fell asleep on the other end. I said I love you. I mean, I ain't, I ain't sleep, but I'm sleepy. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. And I got any, any old heads. Y'all remember when Mojo used to tell you to flip, flip the, the porch light? Or y'all, oh, y'all know I have. Thank you, brother. Thank you. See, everybody ain't been saved all their life. Next thing you know, you'll tell me you don't know what sugar is sugar, salt is salt, didn't get off the day. It's not our fault. You don't know what that means. Don't tell me you don't know what that means. What's the name of this town? Geek Town. Are you ready to throw down? Okay, only, only, all right, thank you. See, my head deacon was in on that one. But love that is supreme comes from God. And how do you know that it's supreme love that's showing up through somebody? Because they act like God towards you. I don't care what he said. I don't care what she said. How is she acting towards you? See, if you love somebody, you ain't going to be putting your hands on them. And I can tell you this. You put your hands on, on, on certain people's family members. It's going to be a two-piece and a biscuit coming your way. Matter of fact, this 2021, we don't even do this no more. I'm just saying. <sighs> Lead poisoning. Okay, y'all. Y'all so funny acting today. I know we on TV or whatever, but come on, y'all. Don't act like you don't know. Like you, like you grew up. Anyway. It's a heavenly love. But listen to this, y'all. He goes on, and in verse number 9, listen to what he says. In this love, 
of God was made manifest amongst us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. In other words, this is heavenly love, but it's also historical love. Mm. Because God didn't leave his son in 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 heaven. But because of the jacked up situation that we are in as a result of inclining the ear to Satan, obeying the, the commands of Satan. In other words, as a result of sin in this world. You all know what, you know what the word of God says in John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he didn't allow his son to just stay in heaven. But because the word saw what was going on, the word says, prepare me a body so I can deal with the situation. Because if God had allowed sin to go unpunished, then he would be unjust and immoral. Can't just let it slide. I, 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 know, I, know, I know when I was a, a child, I remember times that I had... Uh, Um, stepped outside of the will of the father (laughs) and the mother. And I remember these words, Dad, can't you just let it slide this time? And Dad would say, Son, if I let it slide, you will probably do it again and something worse. Every once in a while, he would use this term, I ain't going to get you now. (laughs) Y'all had the same dad I had, huh? He said, but when I do get you, listen, you know something about parents. They know you're going to mess up. They know you're going to mess up. He said, but when I do get you, I'm going to get you for old and for new. Because justice had to be paid. Listen, God says, I can't just let you slide. But what I'll do is I'll pay the penalty myself. I'll send my son. You don't, propitiation simply means that the penalty for one, one, someone else's uh, uh, misguided deed or whatever has been paid by another. In other words, Jesus said, I see how jacked up they are. As a matter of fact, this is what blew me away about when, when, when God's supreme love became historical. Uh, at the birth of Jesus. And and what what blew me away was Jesus, because he is God, God the Son, God the Father, God the Son, or God the Word, and God the Holy Spirit, because he is God, he knew that even though he was coming to die for men's sin, that men were still going to treat him a certain way. He even knew that after he died and was raised again, that you and I would act the way we do. But he still did it. Anybody glad that that the supreme love didn't stay heavenly? And and what blows me away is he didn't wait until we got things together. The scripture tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. it's, it's, it's 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 a historical love. Listen, listen to what he says. I love the way he puts it. In verse number nine, listen to this, y'all. He says, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us. It'd be one thing to be able to talk about God loves us from afar. But Emmanuel has come into, into this world. Emmanuel simply means God with us. Jesus himself experienced the same trials and tribulations that we experience, yet without sin. Same test came his way. You know, you know, you, you do know that Jesus was tested. You, you, you do know that Jesus passed the test with flying colors. You, you do know that he passed the test. Okay, let me say it like this. Um, it's as if the teacher 
in the classroom uh, that's known to have the hardest test in the university. It's as if you had to go in and take this test, no, knowing that this is the hardest test that you'll ever take. And, and, and here it is, the teacher, when you come in and sit in the desk, prepared to take the test, knowing that you prepared, but you ain't prepared. You ever been there before? You, you ever knew that you studied and did the best you could, but the best you could really wasn't good enough? But it's as if the teacher came in the room and said, all right, you ready for the test? And you say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. And then the teacher comes and says, now what I need you to do is to stand up. Stand next to me. I'm sitting in the desk, and I'm going to take the test for you. I know all the answers. Lord have mercy. Because I prepared the test. But when I take the test, if you accept it, I'll give you full credit for the grade. reason why you ain't clapping is because you think you got enough intellect to take the test. You think you're strong enough to take the test. Anybody ever flunked the test? Only to find out, Lord have mercy, when you got saved, good and saved, turn around and find out that the test had already been taken for you. Listen to what he says. He says, God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And this is love. Not that we have loved God. You, you, do you know that every religion in this world tells you that you got to do a bunch of good stuff that's pleasing to their God in order for you to be in right relationship with that God. Every religion except Christianity. What do you mean, preacher? It's not about what you can do to reach up to God. It's about what God did to reach down to you. That's what he just, listen to what he said. Y'all get me excited, my voice going higher. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that God loved. You didn't know what love was. Somebody say, I'm still a little rusty on it. Been loved on by God for 50 years and I'm still rusty on it. He said, it ain't about the fact that you were able to do a whole bunch of good stuff in order to qualify for God's love. It's the fact that God loved you so much. Listen to this. In like manner, okay, let's go back to John 3, 16. Y'all don't mind if I teach a little bit today, do you? Because you know we on a Bible study hiatus. But John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, not that God loved the world in such a great abundance, but in like manner to what? In the fact that when you read John 3 and 14 and 15, 16, 17, when you read that whole chapter, you find out that he talks about how it was one day God's people got on Moses' nerve. And more importantly, as they were making a pilgrimage for deliverance from bondage into freedom, they got on God's nerve. You do know you can get on God's nerve, right? He got on God's nerve. And so what did God do? God sent vipers out amongst them. Serpents that would bite them. Folks was dropping like flies. Moses goes to God on behalf of the people that's got on his nerve. Lord have mercy. I can say that again. You ever been in the position of Moses? Maybe on your job? You ever been in the position of Moses, maybe in your house, in your family, where you've been telling, for, I told you, this is what pleases God, and this is what God hates, but yet and still you decide to turn around and do what you feel like doing, because you grown. They got on Moses' nerve, but more importantly, they got on God's nerve. God sends vipers. Moses goes to God on behalf of the people, 
And God says to Moses, Moses, I will not take the serpents away. I'm not going to do it. He says, but what I will do, Moses, make a bronze serpent. Put him on a pole. Hold the pole up. And everybody who looks to the bronze serpent that's hanging up on that pole will live. And wouldn't you know that there are people who was too prideful, too ignorant, too crazy, too mixed up, too fouled up in the mind, too caught up on themselves and their own ability to look up there. All they had to do is look and live. And so John 3.16 says, so for God so loved the world, in like manner, I'm not taking sin out of this world. But I'm going to hang my son up on the cross. And everybody who looks to the cross will live. Do I have anybody in here today that's yet looking to the cross? Because the vipers are still biting. But, but listen, brothers and sisters, we come to notice and find out that the love of God is the reason why he sent his son. Lord have mercy. Listen to what he says, y'all, because we shouting right now, but I hope we keep on shouting as I keep reading. Listen to what he says. He says, uh, not that we have loved God, but he, let, he loved us. Then he goes on, verse number 11, he helps us to know that this love was not only heavenly, historical, also human, y'all. Listen to what he says. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Uh, in other words, what he says is, the reason why true love, supreme love, has been sent into the world is to deliver the world from sin, from the power of sin, from the penalty of sin, and one day from the presence of sin. But even more so, while we're yet here walking this walk of life, it is for us to be have an example of how we're supposed to treat one another. Lord have mercy. Okay, okay, that, that, that's not good enough for you. Let, 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 let's ask a question. Where in the world would old John, he was an old man by this time, where in the world would he have gotten this ideology of loving folk that sometimes seem to be Somewhat unlovable. Good question. I'm glad you asked, Sister Mac. Here it is. 60 years before. <laughs> 60 years before, y'all. Uh, the picture is this. The Last Supper. Jesus is sitting there. And y'all know they reclined at the table. It was like a couch type deal next to the table. And they reclined on each other. One arm was, was, was leaning and the other was available to dip. Y'all do know they dipped the bread. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I got to teach more, y'all. But, but, but here it is. Uh, they reclined on each other. And John, this old dude right here, 60 years earlier, he was reclining on Jesus. Because you had to recline on the person next to you. It, it wasn't like we have a picnic table uh, nowadays, and, and you sit there and everybody's sitting around. No, it wasn't like that. Everybody was on one side of the table. And, and, and you know, y'all remember that day? This is just before he's going to the cross. He says to them, I have a commandment for you all. Jesus says that you love one another. 60 years go by, 
And John still hasn't forgotten the command that was given him. As a matter of fact, when you read other passages about John, it said that even as an old man, they would bring him in the church. They would carry him in and ask old John, do you have something to say to us today? Uh, 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 do, do you have something to give to us of depth? He said, yeah, my little children. When you open up this passage called First John, my little children, uh, love one another. Because Jesus says, in this will men know that you're my disciples. This is the deciding factor as to whether you belong to me or not. Better love you show one for another. Well, you can't show that love unless you got God. Didn't we just read that? Only a man that has God can show the supreme love. I'm just going to read if y'all don't mind. Y'all don't mind reading the word, do you? I'm just going to read a little bit. Then I, I'll sit down and move out your way. Because it, it seems like you might be bored with this. But, but listen to what he says. He, he says, he says in verse number uh, 12, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us. His love is perfected in us. If you ever want to see a church that's on the move, a group of believers that's on the move. A group of believers who not caught up on what they used to do, what they used to have, what the person did to them 20 years ago, how my feelings got hurt. If you ever want to see a church that really grows in, in, in the power and the move of God, find a church where folk have learned how to forgive and learn how to love. That's what he just said. He says, his love is perfected. You know where John got this from? While he was sitting there listening to Jesus talking about some, my children love one another. He looked over at Peter. He's like, mm. Peter always saying something. Old sharp tongue Peter. Then you look at one of the disciples. He was a, a tax collector who was a crooked tax collector. Then he looked at another one, his brother. You know, they had the nicknames the Sons of Thunder because they had little attitudes. He, he, he knew what kind of person he was because, you know, mama, mama wanted me and my brothers to sit on the side, you know, on the thrones next to Jesus. You know, so, so self-aggrandizing, looking out for self. He looked at all of these, these clients. Then you got Judas. Y'all do know that they used to dip. Man. The one, I'm not telling y'all, go home and do your homework. He looked at all of these people that Jesus taught, and some of the stuff hadn't even happened yet. Jesus knew what kind of folks were sitting at the table when he said, love one another. He knew that the same Peter that said, I'll die for you, was going to be the one that said, I don't know to do. The same Peter that will be found warming himself at the enemy's fire. Same Peter that, 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 that would, would leave the table. Lord have mercy. And hide. John is reflecting on this. See, y'all the shout right, right? That's a shout point. See, you don't know your shout points. Because I can guarantee you in this room, I ain't talking about on the other side of that camera. But in this room, we got folk who have turned their back on Jesus. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. We, we got folk who have left church, heard a good word, got home, got on the hotline. I ain't talking about the one by the silvers. Okay, that's more homework. Go home and... Amen. When they come in, put them back, back over there on that side. Let them sit over there, y'all. Amen. Amen. They just children. The grown folks start doing that, then I'll stop the sermon. But, 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 but he says, listen to this. He goes on and he says, his love is perfect. That person who learns how to love everybody. It's real easy to say I love God. Because you ain't never seen him. 
<laughs> That's what the book says. He said, no man has ever seen God. It's real easy to say, I love God. He said, but if you want to prove you love God. Okay, let me say it like this, y'all. My kids, my daughter sitting over there, beautiful young lady. Son, handsome young man. Kind of looks like his dad a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell you, my kids, uh, as, 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 as sweet as they are, they get on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Y'all ain't even got to live in my house to know they get on my nerves. You know how you know my kids get on my nerves? Because your kids get on your nerves. Anybody say their kids don't get on their nerves sometimes. Either you have an angel or you ignorant. Or you don't live in a house with your kids. They the best. I, I guess so. You don't never see them. My kids get on my nerves sometimes. But can I tell you something? As much as they get on my nerves, Y'all can't come tell me nothing crazy about my kids. Now, I ain't talking about something that they, they, they wouldn't do something crazy. But I'm trying to say, you can't come and just talk any kind of way to me about my kids. And say, Pastor, I love you. You know what I'm trying to tell you right now? As much as you say, God, I love you. You can't just keep talking crazy about his kids to him. You can't just treat his kids any kind of way. You can't come to me, hand me a card, and say, I love you, Pastor. But then you see my kids, you thumping them in the ear and all that kind of stuff, talking crazy. Come on now. And likewise, you can't do that to God. If you really love God, you got to love his kids. Now, that ought to shout you right there if you one of his kids. Get your hand down. Don't be raising your hand. I'm one of God's kids. It's part of the issue why we have such low self-esteem, because we don't know who we are. Let folk treat you any kind of way. Just let folk just talk to you any kind of way. Do you any kind Just do you bold. Bold is an 80s term that is, uh, is basically an um, urban slash hood term that means they treat you in a way that is not desirable of you. And uh, sometimes uh, you're shaded by that person. Shade means that you're ignored to a certain degree amongst others of your peers. So, so, so look, look, listen to what he says. He says, yeah, I'm almost did. I'm almost did. Listen to what he says. He says, whoever hates his brother is in the darkness. I'm sorry, I done, I done turned the page, y'all. Page done turned on me. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Bible. He says, uh, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. See, let me, let me help you today. What empowers you to love unlovable people? Now, you got to understand what love means. This love don't mean that you ace boon coon with them all the time. Because some folk, they, they just straight up clowns. Or they just in a position where they need to mature. And you need to hold back. Uh, as my sister told me the other day, one of, one of my sisters here at the church, she said, Pastor, this member of my family is so out there, I got to put her on the shelf. <laughs> Man, I like that. She, she said, I got to put her on the shelf. You know what that means? Uh, Pop Miller, you know what that means? Put them on the shelf. That means what y'all used to say, feed them with a long-handled spoon. I love you. I'm going to feed you. But I'm not going to give you the chance to bite my finger again. I forgive you. 
but but we're gonna march to the beat of this drummer today. We 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 going we we not gonna march to the beat of your drummer because your drummer got broken sticks. Man, y'all just y'all acting slow today, man. I'm, I'm just saying. Listen to what he says. He says, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and, hallelujah, he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this, hallelujah, is love perfected with us so that we may be confident or may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. As Jesus is. So are we in this world. When folks see you in this world, they ought not see your attitude. They ought not see your thoughts. Because you know your thoughts will have you jacked up. Come on now, let's tell the truth. They ought not see your feelings. Because you feel one day today and feel something different tonight. That they ought not see, they ought not see wishy-washiness. But because God is dwelling in you, the spirit of God is dwelling in you, as he is, as Jesus is. How is Jesus? Jesus is love. <laughs> For God is love. Jesus is in a place where he has decided and determined to pay for the love or pay the penalty of sin for others. As he is, so are we. Why would you take garbage off of folk and not reciprocate garbage for garbage, lying for lying, tattling for tattling? Why would you not do that? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Why, why is it that you're able to turn your cheek and love people that you used to couldn't stand? Able to go visit people in the hospital that you know been talking about you. Able to go visit people and be a consolation to them and, and, and give comfort to them when you know they can't, they hate your guts, they didn't like your mama, they didn't like your grandmama, but yet still you there to lend support and read the Psalms to them. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Listen to what he says, y'all. He goes on, he says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected, hallelujah, listen to what he says, in love. We love because he first loved us. In other words, if you're walking in fear, now this, I'm almost done, I promise you. But, but, but listen to this, when we first come in a relationship with God, what do we do? Generally, there's a fear because you understand what you've done, who you are, and the penalty. In other words, there's judgment when attached to, to that, that fear. But as you grow in God, as you grow in understanding, if you grow in relationship with him, then that, that relationship, it, it, it begins to mature. And so now I don't have fear of judgment. I have perfect love. Listen to this. Because I'm in relationship with Almighty God as my heavenly Father. I told y'all, your kids get on your nerves sometimes. Matter of fact, you get on your own nerves sometimes. Kids get on your nerves sometimes. But listen, at the end of the day, you still love your kids. You still love them. How about this? You love them when they wrong.
can I get just one hearty amen before this thing is up? You love them when they're wrong. You wish they would do right. You're going to keep telling them what's right, but you love them when they're wrong. And there should never be a time where they feel like you're going to throw them away. God would never throw you away. Matter of fact, let's shout, y'all. God ain't threw you away yet. You did enough this morning. If it, Come on now. And if anyone says I love God and hates his brother, what the book say? He's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Love supreme. Love supreme. True love comes from heaven. True love came by him. Who was that? Jesus Christ. It was a historical love. But it's also a human love. He tells us today that we can do it, y'all. You can love folk who done you wrong. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Pastor, you don't know how hard it is. I, 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 let, let me tell you something. Y'all think I flew out of heaven? Man, I grew up on the east side of Detroit. You know? I, I, I grew up um, amongst people who, that look like us. <laughs> I, I went to school with people that look like us. Then, then, then after I left high school, I went to university with a bunch of folk. I went to HBCU, y'all, folk that look like us. Yeah, I did. Then, then, okay, then, then I got called into the ministry with people. Y'all know my story. Then, then I got called into the pastorate with people that look like you. <clears throat> and I'm saying this, y'all, because I need you to understand the gravity of forgiveness, the gravity of walking in love. And I'm going to say this. You know, it might be the last thing I say, but I'm going to say it today. Sometimes people that you love or that you've been commanded to love with a heavenly love are the very ones that try to take you through hell. Sometimes they're in your house. Sometimes they're on your job. Sometimes they're in your church family. But there ain't no reason for you to walk away from God because people try to take you through hell. Am I talking? I know it is not a shouting message, but am I talking right today, y'all? But here's the thing, Sister Desi. What I come to find out, and I'm going to tell y'all the truth, if I don't ever say it again publicly, I love that woman sitting on that third row. My mother and my dad, we just celebrated his, his, uh, his, his death last week, 14 years ago. The reason why I love them is not because they gave us a whole lot of stuff, because they didn't. They could have did better. Hey Amen. They could have did better. But guess what? My kids say the same thing about me. But they understood something. I'll tell you what, I, what, I, what I, 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 I really praise God for. It's a hard lesson. And I know most of y'all will not even get this. But my mother, she still says it to this day. They would tell us there are some hellish people. And I'm going to tell you, some of the worst hell I ever seen was in church. I've seen people lie on my parents. I've seen people, you know, treat them all kinds of ways. And, and, and yet and still, here I am, and sometimes my brother, uh, we would be with them when they would go and visit people at the hospital that we know at the church meeting they was clowning them. Clowning the pastor. I know this ain't something that I should put out there over the air because you're you, you supposed to keep the secrets in the family. No, this ain't no secret. Let me tell you something. This might help you today. I know 
they would go and visit these people. I know of a time where somebody who had dogged them out, they brought them into the house and took care of them. And everybody you take care of, I ain't going to say it. Anyway. But what my mom and dad used to tell us sometimes, they said, Kevin, the reason why we do that is because sometimes God puts you in a position where he wants you to learn how to love the hell out of people. I, I know, I know ain't nobody standing in that line. Anybody, Lord, I want to be used to love the hell out of you. You know why? Because you got to go through hell with that person in order to get in there and love the hell out of them. But you can't love the hell out of them if you ain't got love. You can't give what you ain't got. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I, I hear the Holy Ghost saying this just as clear. For some of y'all, you trying to figure out why people treat you a certain way, they can't give you but what they got. Quit trying to expect holiness from somebody full of hell. They, they can't give you but what they got. Okay. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God, for your word. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You can also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this page.